Hello, this is Dr. Joshua Kroos with Capitus Medical and Aesthetics. Today I would like to talk about a peptide class called growth hormone releasing peptides. I commonly prescribe these to my patients for a number of different reasons, including injuries, fat burning, muscle growth, overall anti-aging effects, and just overall well-being. These peptides are very powerful because they allow our body to make our own growth hormone rather than taking exogenous or external growth hormone, which can suppress our own natural production of hormones, this actually increases our own production. So it's actually a healthier method to, to stimulate your body to heal. So there's three major ones that I commonly use. One of them is called Tesmorella. This is probably my favorite of the three that I use. And this one has actually been proven to be very safe it stimulates the brain in a very similar fashion as our natural growth hormone releasing um, hormone. And it's also, uh, it's also commonly used to help people burn fat. So this one I give in conjunction with a lot of uh, weight loss um, treatments such as semaglutide, trizepatide, um, or just overall exercise. Some people I don't feel are good candidates for, for the GLP-1 uh, agonists. So anyway, this is a very healthy way to help your body enhance its overall health and weight well-being. But it does have a half-life of approximately 30 minutes. So you want to take it before bed and it will stimulate uh, release of this hormone. But it actually will be out of your system pretty quickly, which is good and also bad. The other one is Ipamorin. Ipamorelin's gained a lot of popularity recently because this one actually has a little bit more effect on ghrelin receptors uh, in the pituitary in the body, which is associated with mass production, such for bodybuilders and trying to get overall tissue health better. It's a great peptide for healing. Um, as also, if you if you, you take it and you're fasting, um, it'll actually make you gain um, or lose fat and gain muscle. So it's a great combination with trizepatide as well, as well as semaglutide. So I like this peptide in combination with tesmorelin because it, it kind of hits both angles on the pituitary gland so you get the activation of multiple receptors. There's another one that I commonly use, which is called CJC1295. This is a, a slight variation of tesmorelin. It has an additional group added to it that makes it more stable and extends the half-life, not by a little bit, but by days. The half-life on this one is about six days for most people, sometimes longer. This is good and bad. So a lot of people use this and it actually can be abused and you can actually have excessive growth hormone release from this. I like it because it does preserve the natural uh, sinusoidal release or method of release that our body naturally produces hormone, but in general it just increases the baseline amount of growth hormone that your body is releasing. The good thing is, is that it does last longer and it's a very potent peptide for improving and releasing our own natural growth hormone. The bad side is because it's around for so long, it gives a better opportunity for our own immune system to recognize it and say, hey, what is this thing? And so I've noticed in my own experience that a lot more people tend to have reactions to this one where it actually allows um, antibodies to form against it. And in these cases, patients will actually inject it or use it and they'll start to develop a rash or an irritation from it. And that's clearly your immune system rejecting it. So that's the only one I've had that issue with, though there's always a potential for that occurring in anything that you're using that's foreign, including drugs. So I would like to generally say that this class of peptides is very safe and effective at naturally increasing our own growth hormone. Um, but it should be used under the guidance of a physician so that we can actually monitor with labs and, and make sure that you're not getting too high or having any negative adverse effects from using this. Once again, this is Dr. Joshua Kroos. I hope you've learned something today and I look forward to talking about this topic more in the future.